Hello folks and welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to be doing a sky replacement in Adobe After Effects. Now just to give you an idea of the work we're going to be doing in this tutorial I'm going to show you the before image we're going to start with which is this. It's a very simple shot of a building and it's got a, a pretty good sky in the background but I want to replace that sky with something more dark brooding and slightly gothic. Now there's going to be some challenges in this tutorial. One of the main ones is going to be that as we can see the image is actually moving. It's handheld, it wasn't a tripod. So actually putting that background in is going to involve a little bit of motion work as well. So here's the before image that we've got. I'm going to replace this sky which is quite white and blue and was done in the morning. And I want to aim for this. This will be our final product a nice dark brooding gothic sky and as you can see if you look at the sky here I'm just going to pause it if you watch the sky in the background it's animated and I did that because I was working with a still image and if you put a still sky in the background of clearly what's a piece of moving video footage it looks odd so the other job we've got to do is actually to animate this still sky background okay let's get to work now the first job I've got to do with this piece of video footage is apply a motion tracker to it. And the reason I've got to do that is that I was shooting it handheld and so the image is moving slightly. Now if I put a replacement sky background here and the video is moving and the background still, it's going to look a bit strange. So our first job is to actually apply a motion tracker here and then we'll attach the image to that motion tracker so that the background sky, and here's my sky clouds, there they are, will move in tandem with this video layer. So I'm going to make sure my time marker is at zero. Always do that when you can do motion tracking work. I'm going to go to window and I'm going to click on tracker here. And the motion tracker window pops up. You can undock it if you like. I'm just going to do that and just move it up to here. Click on track motion here. The first thing that comes up is a track point. Now I'm just going to make it slightly low. Oops. Now I'm just going to grab the edges of it just to increase its size a little bit. And I'm going to move it and place it round about here. Now when you're doing motion tracking you want to try and place the motion tracker on a piece of footage that's got quite a high contrast range in it which this bit has. We've got pure white at the top and nice greys and blacks underneath. So always place it in something that's got quite alternate colours. That should do. What this tracker is going to do is it's going to track the position and movement of the image as it goes along the timeline. However, as you can see, if you look about, I think it's around about here it happens, there, there's actually a slight bit of rotation in the image. So we've also got to go on here and click Rotation, like so. So now we've got Position selected and Rotation. It's created another track point, which I'm going to move to again, make it a little bit larger. And I'm going to move that down to probably about there. That should do it. So when it tracks along the timeline, it's going to track the position and the rotation of the image because the image is moving up and down left and right but it is rotating ever so slightly as well okay let's take the time marker back to the beginning and the next step is to press this button here analyze forward and it'll analyze the image as it goes along the timeline Okay, that looks pretty successful. If I scrub up and down the timeline, those two track points, track point one and track point two, should be closely linked to the edge of that building. And if they grip it all the way through the timeline, then I know my motion track has been successful. Now the next thing we want to do is, we want to attach the dark clouds image, this one, to 
whoops, to these motion track points. Before I do that though, I'm going to create a null. I'm going to go to layer, new, null object. The null object is here in the timeline. I'm now going to go to edit target here on my tracker, click on it, and I'm going to make sure that that motion target is not on my video layer, which it shouldn't be anyway by default, but is in fact on my null layer here. And then click on OK. Don't forget that step, folks. Okay, It's edit target and make sure you've chosen the null. And then click on OK. And your next step then is to click on apply. And it should then apply these track points to this null object. When you click on apply, the motion tracker options come up. You want to make sure you're selecting X and Y. Click on OK. And what we should find now that the null object, which is this red box here, now moves and is attached to the building. And if you look in the timeline here, you can see the position and the rotation track points have now been attached to the null object. Let's just close that down to tidy things up a bit. And we'll close this one as well. And there we go. The building's moving and the null is moving with the building. We're going to bring my replacement sky in now. And I'm going to pull that down to the top here. I'm just going to move it up ever so slightly. That'll do. My next step is to parent this sky layer called dark clouds to the null object. When I parent the dark clouds to the null, it means that the dark clouds will move around in the same manner that the null does. My next step is to go to this parent column here. Now you can attach the dark cloud to the null in two ways. You can click on here and select null. As you can see, the dark cloud layer is now parented to the null. The other way you can do it is to use the pick whip, which is this thing here. You can grab that, pull it over to the null, and it's done the same thing. The dark clouds are now attached to the null. What this means is, now that I move up and down the timeline, my sky layer, the dark clouds, should be moving in the same manner that my video layer is, which it appears to be doing. Now I'm just going to take the opacity down on the cloud layer, just a tad, and you'll see why in a second. I'm just going to take it down, and the reason is I'm going to draw a mask on the cloud layer. Let's just give ourselves a little bit more space here to work with. Let's just pull that out like so, that's better. And you'll see why we're going to need a bit more space around the edges in a minute or two. So I've got my dark clouds layer. Make sure you've got that layer selected. Go to the pen tool here. And then let's now draw a mask. I'm going to go over the edges slightly. I'm going to click there, 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 there. And then join the mask up like so. When you finish drawing the mask, click back on the select tool or press V on the keyboard. Let's now just uh, scrub through the timeline and see what we've got. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. I'm going to put the opacity of the cloud layer back up to full so we can see it in its full effect. That doesn't look too bad. We've got some sort of sharp edges here that are slightly problematic. Um, let's now deal with those. So I'm going to just open the cloud layer, open masks, open the mask here, Let's just move this up a bit. And uh, it's a bit of a sharp edge. We can just see the old sky coming through the background here. So I'm just going to feather the mask a little, like so, just to dull the edges. The problem is, though, when you do feather something, in fact, let's not go mad. Let's put the feather to about five. It actually contracts it slightly. 
So to counteract that, you want to put probably the mask expansion up to about 5 as well. And then that just draws the mask back in. So feather to about 5, expansion to about 5, but adjust it according to taste. Now what I've left my feather and expansion on is 5 on the feather and 10 on the expansion. But you can adjust it according to taste depending on what sort of problems you're having with your edges on the mask. But I'm going to scrub up and down the timeline. I'm pretty happy with mine. Now so far the job's looking pretty good. The sky in the background, this layer here, is now moving with the video layer so it looks a little bit more photorealistic. The problem is though the sky is not moving. We need to animate the sky. Now to do that what I'm going to ask you to do is click on the layer here and this has got a mask attached to it. So click on the dark clouds layer and do a right click and go to pre-compose and we'll call that pre-comp sky with mask. Then we'll click on OK. Double click now on that pre-comp layer and it'll open it up as a separate layer. And we're going to animate the sky background in this pre-comp layer. I'm going to open my transform properties, set a keyframe for position, go to the end of the timeline and just animate not too much. We don't want to be excessive. That should do. There you go, the sky is now moving a little bit from right to left. If I now go back to the original video here, we can now see my sky is animating. Now if you're wondering why we had to do that pre-comp work, the reason is if we hadn't and we tried to animate the sky with the mask on it, the sky and the mask would have moved together off screen sort of in this direction like so, and it would have revealed the original sky underneath. So to avoid that, you've got to make a pre-comp of this dark clouds layer or your sky layer, and then in the pre-comp here, do the animated work. Go back to the original composition, and then as you can see, the sky is now animating. Now that's not too bad a job at all. I'm fairly pleased with that. As we can see here, they've got a slight sort of little bit of a sun bleaching or a sunspot of some kind from the original video. And probably in a later tutorial, I'll do some cloning work to get rid of that. But by and large, I'm quite happy with the new sky. Yeah, not too bad at all. One final thing you might want to do is you might find that having changed the sky, the original video colors don't quite match. So it's probably time to do a little bit of color work at the end. I'm going to click on the video layer here, go to Effect, Color Correction, and I'm going to go for Hue and Saturation. And I'm just going to do a very simple desaturation of the image. I'm going to desaturate the video layer down to about maybe 30, just so it's taken some of the color out of those windows. They were looking a little bit blue and a bit bright, and the image now looks, I think, a little bit more balanced. Let's just play it through one more time and look at the results. And there we have it. The sky has been replaced from the bright blue of the morning to a nice brooding gothic sky. Okay folks, hope you found that useful. See you in the next tutorial.